Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to learn how to display money using different forms of currency like you see in many popular MMOs. Before we begin, you should note that I consider this a beginner level tutorial. To save video time, I skip a lot of footage where I'm dragging blocks across the screen. So if you're able to look at a screenshot of blocks and determine where they came from, you should have no problem with this tutorial. Remember that you can pause the video at any time and refer to the video chapters in the description below to skip ahead to parts that interest you. So let's get started. I'm going to create a very simple design on my test screen here. The layout isn't important, use whatever works with your design, but you can download these images from my GitHub if you want to use them during this tutorial. I'm going to make the horizontal layout to be the exact width and height of this background image and set the horizontal alignment to the right side and the vertical alignment to the center. You can now add a label and an image for gold, silver, and copper respectively. Name these and style them however you want, but I'm going to call the labels int gold, int silver, int copper, and the coin images I'll call them image gold, image silver, and image copper. So if you're familiar with MMOs, you can probably guess what these do. If someone has 50 gold, then the number 50 should be displayed in the label named int gold. Now the coin images are 40 by 40 pixels with the exception of the copper image, which is 65 by 40. That's 65 pixels in width and 40 pixels in height. The copper image has different dimensions so that there's some extra padding to the right side of the background. This way, the image isn't flush to the far right, there's some space in between the outer portion of the rectangle and where we want it to appear in the inner rectangle. But I do think that 40 by 40 is a little big, so I've resized gold and silver coins to be 20 by 20, and the copper coin is resized to 33 by 20. I'm going to throw another label up here just for testing purposes. This will allow us to see the amount we've entered, so we can just verify the coin output is correct. So simple design is done, let's move on to the block section. Create a procedure called convert currency with one argument called amount. Create an initialize event for the screen and add the convert currency procedure. Grab a number block and enter any amount. Let's set the test label to display the amount we've entered. You can test out the app to make sure the amount entered is visible on the label, but remember that this block is purely for testing purposes. Now create four local variables exactly in this order gold, new amount, silver, and copper. We're now going to create simple equations that retrieve the gold, silver, and copper values from the amount entered. We can set the value of gold to be the amount entered divided by 10,000. Notice that this equation is floored, which means we're returning the largest whole number that is less than or equal to a given number. We're basically rounding down the result of amount divided by 10,000. We need to floor each of these equations because we can't guarantee that every equation will produce a whole number. For example, 548963 divided by 10,000 equals 54.8963. The gold amount is 54, so we certainly don't want to display the numbers after the decimal place. Next, we set the value for new amount. We create this variable to reduce redundant block chunks and to focus solely on the numbers after the decimal place. The value for new amount is the remainder of amount divided by 10,000 rounded down. So the remainder of 548963 divided by 10,000 is 8963. Now we can't use the values of local variables within local variables because the variables we create here are only accessible in the do portion of this block. So declare silver and copper as zero and then set their values in the do portion of this block. Set silver to floor the value of new amount divided by 100. In this case, 89.63 divided by 100 is 89.63. After we floor 89.63, we're left with just 89. All that's left is the remainder of new amount divided by 100. In this case, the remainder of 89.63 divided by 100 is 63. Now the copper value is probably the only number that doesn't need to be floored. I'm just kind of OCD, so I'm doing it. Now let's do a quick test and check for mistakes. Set the text for each label to display the appropriate value, gold, silver, and copper. If there are no mistakes in your blocks, you should see 54 gold, 89 silver, and 63 copper, provided that you used that number as my example. Now let's delete 54 from the input, keeping just 89.63 as the amount. Run the app again, and notice the output displays 0 gold, 89 silver, and 63 copper. Depending on your theme, you may not want to display zero values, so let's take away any zero values and any coin images that we don't want to see. Create a second procedure called display currency and use two arguments named variable and component. 
Grab an if block and perform a quick check. If the variable is less than or equal to zero, then set this label's text to nothing. Now stop right here for a second. You may or may not be familiar with the any component, but it is basically your best friend when working with a component family. So in this case, we're saying, hey, App Inventor, check all of the labels in my app. If you find a label with the name int gold, then set the text value of only that label to be nothing, which means it will basically be invisible. Now we need to do the same thing in the else statement of this block. So we obviously want to display the value for any variable whose value is greater than zero. Instead of a blank value, we grab the value of variable. In this example, our variable is gold and our component is int gold. We have zero gold, so if we run this app, we should see that the number zero isn't displayed at all. It's just invisible. But the gold coin is still visible, so let's fix that. Add a third argument called image. Then grab an any component for image. We can now set the visibility of this image to false, so it will be invisible. But we also need to set the visibility of true for any value greater than zero. For this to work, remove the three labels in the previous procedure and replace them with calls to the display currency procedure. Pass the gold variable through the first argument, then grab only the component name for int gold, which you'll find at the very bottom of every component block list. Then grab only the component name for image gold. Copy and paste this block two times and change the values to reflect silver and copper. When you're finished, run the app in the emulator or the AI companion and make sure everything is working. If there are no errors in your blocks, you should see only the amount for silver and copper. To wrap things up, let's talk a little bit about updating the currency amount. In a video game, you're probably used to accepting a quest and noticing that the reward is, let's say, 5 gold, 40 silver, right? So in order to implement this system in your app, you would reward the player in copper. That is to say, you would program the amount as 54,000. The player is receiving 54,000 copper, but the player would see 5 gold, 40 silver. You wouldn't want to display the copper amount, that's just too many numbers. Just like if you have 100 pennies in your hand, it's the same as saying you have one dollar. Super easy, right? All right, guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a great day. Bye!